thanks very much, Richard. Yes, live at the Executive Lounge here at Glanford Park. It's two men sitting right in front of me, Chairman Peter Swan, the new manager, Mark Robbins, the first voice you will hear live here on BBC Radio. On the side is that of the Iron Chairman, Peter Swan. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for your attending. Uh, my first press conference, actually, for the, uh, uh, to fill the, the uh, position of manager. Obviously, we talked about this uh, last week. On Friday, uh, we were pretty much close to a deal to bring Mark here and I'm, I'm glad to say that this morning we managed to iron everything out and uh, he is now the new manager of the Scum of United. So I'm sure he'll be ready for any questions you have and of course I'll be here as well. <laughs> Mark, welcome to Scunthorpe United. Mike White from BBC Radio Humberside. First of all, you, your reaction to, to coming in as manager of Scunthorpe United? Well, first and foremost, I'm delighted. You know, I went to the game on, uh, on Saturday and had a, had a look and a good look at what the players are capable of from time to time. And uh, I was encouraged, there's no doubt about that. I think um, both Andy and um, uh, Tony Dawes have, have handled that situation brilliantly. I thought the players uh, stepped up and, and got a really good it's always a difficult place to go, Julie. I thought, not only that, I thought they controlled the game well and, uh, and passed it well as well. So it gives me, it gives me real encouragement. How has this move come about? Talk us through it. Um, the usual scenario, really. I was, uh, I was busy painting and decorating, as been widely reported. Um, mostly watching, as my wife was doing the painting and decorating, being all honest. Um, the, the call came sort of Wednesday afternoon. First thing I did was want to see, uh, of course. Uh, and unfortunately, in these circumstances, somebody's got to lose the job for you to gain a job. And um, you know, Russ did a great job last season getting promoted. Um, he's recruited uh, some good players, and um, wish him all the best. I know Russ, but I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm not close close to him, but I know him, and he'll bounce back and, uh, and go on to to other uh, sort of things. But um, that gives me an opportunity, and the, the opportunity I think was. Um, too good to turn down. I think everything that's happening has been for um, the chairman's plans, the owner's plans, uh, the new stadium, the training ground, I think the, um, the existing playing staff may need a little bit of help. I'm not talking about numbers coming in because it's quite big numbers here anyway. But it's exciting times, absolutely exciting times. And, and, and the plan that I I work to, obviously dependent, club dependent, uh, and resource dependent, Things will change, and it can't be something where we go and throw millions and millions of pounds at things. It's got to be right. And the first thing we've got to do is make sure that the structure's right, the staffing structure's right, and the playing squad is uh, as fit as it can possibly be going into the into the upcoming games. You know, we know in the football league that the games come thick and fast. And, uh, it's a real test of the squad. There's been some some injuries uh, here to, to, to key players and at any level. You can't afford the, the number of, um, of injuries that they've had. Always causes problems, so we've got to make sure that we get as many players back as fit as possible on the pitch as often as we possibly can do to give ourselves every chance to win. It's the same, I think, what I saw on Saturday. Yeah. How, how big is the challenge facing you then? Obviously, you saw the win on Saturday, but where the team are at the moment, how big is this challenge for you? Uh, every, every job is a, is a challenge, it's a different challenge. Uh, having said that, it's the same challenge, but a big point. So we've got to work hard, but I want, I want everybody to enjoy it. I want everybody to, to enjoy where we hopefully will get to. Um, now my, my, my role will obviously change and evolve over the period of time, first and foremost, but we have enough points um, on the board to, to stay clear of any, any danger. And at the same time, try and do it in a way that's going to excite supporters. You know, I think that's, that, that's key, and eventually it'll happen. I'm hoping that the players will give me, uh, give me everything that, that, that they can do. Um, some might fall short, there might be one or two changes, there might be one or two incomes. Um, and that will depend on what the, what the players give me from now until uh, until I decide that the time's right to, to, to make a move on the market. It seems to have been a job that you've done at all the clubs you've managed. You've gone in, you've improved them, you've given them a lift. How have you gone about doing that and, and how will you transfer that this time around? Well, there's, no, there's no secret for you. You've got to work hard. I think organisation. From the players and make sure that the players are, uh, are capable of doing what you're asking them to do. I think that's a key. Um, at Huddersfield, it was a similar situation where we had uh, 16 games left and uh, we were three points from the relegation zone. So we were actually in the relegation zone. So, uh, the championships are different animals. Um, it's very, very tough. Uh, it 
it is in all leagues. There's no, you know, I'm not making in light of, uh, of League One because it's a really, really tough league. Um, but we have to make sure that we are uh, we're, we're competent and confident uh, moving forward to be able to pick the points up as quickly as we possibly can do. You know, there's back to back games and we've got to try and try and put those wins together when, when we possibly can do. And again, I'll go back to Saturday. Um, there were elements that were really good and there were elements that were obviously good. Come to a club uh, and with a chairman that's had two managers in the last 12 months. Was that any concern to you at all when you were offered the position? I think we all know. I mean, we all know football. But it's, a, it's a precarious game. It's results, results driven. You know, I think we've got to make sure that, uh, there is a, a plan and a proper plan in place, and we don't waver from the plan. I think there's always scope to um, to change and modify things as you go along. But I've got assurances that. Um, I've got a blank canvas, I've got carte blanche to, to, to manage the autonomy to be able to manage and make the decisions that we need. Like so, you know, if we succeed, we succeed, we succeed together. If we fail, not be me. <laughs> Just a, a couple of quick ones for the chairman. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yes. I know there's a, a, others wanting to ask questions. Yeah. Peter, first of all, I know you've spoken to us a couple of times. We know that Mark was coming in. Um, what are you hoping? What are you, your expectations? What are your aims now for, for Mark? I think when there's any uh, change over in management, you, you're always concerned that the person you're going to bring in is, is, is perhaps just firefighting and, and there aren't any future plans, but I, I, I wanted to be a little bit more proactive. Um, we, are, we were going through a very difficult uh, stage here at the club and uh, you know, once that decision is made, um, I was totally focused on who I wanted, uh, someone who had good experience about getting clubs out of the position that we were in and also someone there that, that could buy into what I wanted here at the club, which is to move into a new stadium and, and try and compete at championship level and, and hopefully move between League One and Championship without, without uh, struggling and, and worrying about going down to League Two. So, um, you know, it didn't take me too long to find the ideal candidate. Uh, like I say, I think uh, I remember calling him and we, we met up the next morning outside uh, the pub, which was shut, which was quite interesting, stuck in a car park having a chat to each other. So. You know, um, that couple of hours we spent there, I, th I think I think we both bought into each other, and I, and I think uh, there's quite a lot that Mark wants, that I want, and, and vice versa. So uh, I think he's the perfect candidate to take us forward. Is the pub being closed kept the expenses down? I suppose <laughs> we had a coffee. Anyway. <laughs> uh, what, what are the formalities of the deal? How long is the contract? Um, it's a three-year deal, basically. Um, I'm not going to talk about everything else inside there, but there is some protection for the club, and some protection for Mark, of course. There's, um, but basically it's a project um, to take us into the new state and establish there as a Category 2 football academy as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a big project and it's a big blank canvas, he knows that, um, but it's well up for it. That's fine for me. I've taken it over long enough. If anyone else, the, the press conference will continue. We'll stick with it for a few minutes here on BBC Radio Humberside. It's, it's a big project, Peter, you talk about, but it's an exciting one, isn't it, for Schoolfoot United? Absolutely, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. I think, you know, as a, a club like ourselves, can't, can't go forward um, and be sustainable unless we've got some sort of basis from that. Um, we all know that, that perhaps, you know, we've run out of time here in the fact that we can't expand really. Um, we're now going to be part of a retail park um, come October. And we all know it's going to be an interesting first Saturday, I think. Um, and we need to find somewhere different. We, we train away from here, our kids train away from here. Um, what this does is give us an opportunity to actually move into a purpose-built stadium uh, where all our footballers and, and all our team can be together. Uh, I think that's a great start um, and it's an exciting time as well for the town. I, th I think if we can kick-start um, the Lakes project and the area around where we're going to move, um, you know, it can only be benefit the area. Mark, if I can just come to you, Chris something from the school club, trying to grab the local paper. Um, Watching at Gillingham then on Saturday, bearing in mind that you were you were watching a side that went into the game second from bottom in the division, were you surprised maybe by, by what you saw there? Um, I think I was encouraged, I think that's probably the key word, I think there's, um, there's some reasons to be optimistic and obviously there's areas for some work, you know, but uh, really it's, not, it's not something that will surprise many because we've seen the team more often than I have, and I was encouraged by it. One or two areas that you can you can identify you pick up straight away where you know you need uh, you need a little bit of work. Um, that be an ongoing thing. You know what, what the good thing is we've got a lot of games left to uh, to, to we try to so fill back the stations um, yet. We've got to make sure that we uh, put the right building blocks in place early.
to um, to make sure that we move in the, in the proper direction. We'll do that. And with the league position, it, it certainly seems like the sort of challenge that you you can get your teeth into. It's, it's what you've done sort of numerous times in, in your previous jobs. Yeah, I think everybody points to that fact. I mean, it, it, people forget when I was a goal, we had 17 point reduction, 10 point reduction. We, we ended up building a, a squad that was capable of getting to the top of the league, which meant that Barnsley came along and, and, and poached me from there. I spent time at Barnsley when they were at the bottom of the league because that's generally, generally when you get in the, get in, get in the jobs. Um, Save Barnsley in the first season, the second season we finished in the highest position that, um, that they finished for a long time. Um, so that was a that was a success story in terms of what we could achieve there. Um, I went out the game for a little while. I went and joined the Premier League. Worked in the Premier League while was, the Triple P was going on, which gave me a real good ground in grassroots and an understanding of what's happening um, at, at, at that level, which is you know, cap two things really exciting because the, the, the new development will help and aid aid that. The catchment area is really good. Yeah, I think some good players are in the building. We would maybe enhance that. And certainly the, the, the facilities won't help. Situations. We're going to try and produce our own players as well. The same every every club. We moved on to Coventry in a similar situation. So you're right, but then we ended up just on the on the verge of the playoffs. Um, I had Gary McCheffrey there at the time, so I know one or two people there. I worked with Lee Turnbull in the as the chief scout for a while. And uh, whilst at Huddersfield, and then obviously Huddersfield uh, in a similar situation. But the remit was different. You know, the remit there was saving in the first instance, and then changed the playing style in the second. So I've had a, I've had a varying varying challenges at different levels and, um, and, and managed them pretty well. I mean last season we finished uh, we still finished in a 14 year high position so you know we're doing something right. I think that the next step for me is a promotion on the season. I think this this club will give me that opportunity to do it. So I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to it with uh, uh, with Gusto. I'm, I'm, I'm really really looking forward to it. I think that the, the, the key for me is to get the right stuff in place. Make sure that we embrace the staff that are already here and help them uh, develop, uh, and we can help the players as much as we possibly can to do with the performances that we're going Can you tell us, in, the, in terms of the, the staff up there that you've mentioned, do you, do you sort of plan to bring in a, a number two here? Yes, yeah, absolutely. I think um, I will do that uh, more or less straight away, and um, I'll look to maybe bring in one other member of staff, which will be a big component in terms of what I want to do, but I want them to sort of bridge a gap with a number of roles that they can, they can, they can uh, do. So, yeah, but I'll take I'll take my time on, on one or two areas, but I'm, I want the staff in place uh, as quickly as we possibly can to give us a chance to... Uh, just on... Yeah. Sorry. I could do, but I'm not going to this way. <laughs> well, just on that one, will Andy Dawson have a role on, on that? Absolutely, course? absolutely. I think he's, a, he's, a, he's a, still a player, still only got a playing contract. I think it's really important that, um, that you try and help people, you know, he's, he's come in to do a job and he's got a coaching role. So as long as as long as he works hard and I'm sure he will, I don't know him, I don't know him, but I've seen bits of him and I like it. You know, I like what I saw on Saturday. Both him and Tony Dawes have done a have done a really good job with that. It's a difficult situation to be. They've embraced it, they've done really well and he managed to get a 3-0 win away at Gillingham, which is no easy feat. Um, so yes he'll have he'll have a role without show and we'll try and help him. Okay, thank you. Right.